What is up, everyone? You are back with Coach Blaker, the Black Baker, and today, 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 we're going to be looking at a ribbon top gameplay here. First of all, though, if you guys would like a free coaching as well as a free bot review um, each week, make sure you we hit 200 subscribers. When we hit 200 subscribers, we are going to be doing free um, coaching sessions each week. And if you guys would like free bot reviews, make sure you don't join my Discord. Go to the free bot review tab and just post your op.gg, and I will try to get to it when I can. So, on to you here, Violet. One thing I noticed looking at your account before I, I, I even picked this game was the fact that we play a ton of different champions. We, we play 80 different champs, 86 um, for this whole season, 86 different champions. And I used to have this same problem. I would play a ton of games and play a ton of champions and wonder, you know, kind of why, man, the climbing is hard. But if you look, all the chance where you lose or all the chance where you have a 50% win rate are games basically being wasted and thrown away right so when you have a 50 percent win rate on a champ oh 44 wins four loses cool well you didn't technically go anywhere right essentially you probably did go up a couple of lp because you might look win 20 and then might lose like 18 so you just go up you know those two two lp four times but regardless you get what i'm trying to say right win rate wise you don't go anywhere it's the same so you can play 100 games and just randomly throw in Kha'Zix and you'll you should be at 108 games but your percent will still be the same because you basically just wasted those games. And then you swap to another champion and learn nothing about Kha'Zix, and you just basically wasted your time. The, ch the ones where you have lower uh, percent win rates, like 33 and stuff like that, I mean, that just pretty much drags your win rate down and drags your MMR down for losing those games, and it's just a waste. So let's just say we definitely, let's just say that we played about 60 games. We played more than that, but let's just say we played 60 games and we lost all 60 of those games. We won games too, but we'll just say we lost 60 games. So if we lose 60 games, right? And we're at 533. I feel like I'm not gonna do the math per se, but let's say we took away those 60 loses. How high do you think your win rate would be right now? What rank do you think you'd be right now? You wasted 60 games on losers, but you could be out of 567 wins and like 400 and I'm going to just take a guess here. 400 and like 8, 80, 80, 83. Am I wrong? I don't know. Fuck it. Doesn't matter. Point made. We don't have to play all these champions because we could definitely be higher. So one thing you want to think about is like, let's just take uh, Shaquille O'Neal, right? Everybody knows who Shaquille O'Neal is. He played center. I don't know if he played center out of college or, or high school. I don't even know if he went to college. But let's just say for the sake of this argument, he only played center. In college, he was like, well, you know what? I'm good at center, but let me try to play point guard. Let me try to play forward. Let me try to play uh, shooting forward, whatever, right? There's different roles in basketball. And if he's like, I want to play all this, do you think an NBA team will pick him up? Why would they want someone who's good at everything when they can have someone who's excellent at one thing and get someone else to fill the other role and be excellent at that? You see what I mean? So if you want to hang with the big boys, you want to get to Diamond Master Challenger or Grandmaster Challenger, you're going to have to be like Shaquille O'Neal and play that one damn center. And that way, you're going to be excellent at something, and you will be above average on that something, and you will be in high elo on that something, right? No player in the history of anything can do everything. You might be able to do it to an extent, but you're not going to be able to do it as tip-top as everybody else. If, if Shaquille O'Neal was to play fucking point guard in a basketball game, guarantee he's not going to be as good as another point guard. Guarantee, because he's... He could probably do it in like a low level play, but if he's top notch NBA play, he's not, he's they, no, hell no. So the same things with you, right? All these champs, all these roles, you should only know how to play one or two. You can really only get away, you, you can get away with one role, but you also don't want to have a whole bunch of champions, right? So right here we see, we play a ton of Kennen. Kennen can be flexed mid and top. So you could play Kennen mid and top. Jax can be flexed top and jungle. So you can play him top and jungle. Katarina can really only go mid. Trinomir can go mid and top. Pike obviously can go mid, but I don't recommend it anymore. It pretty much is ass. Master Yi can go mid, top, and jungle. And then I don't really recommend you keep playing Riven because she's at a 30%, 38% win rate. Um, if you really want to play Riven, you got to stick with her. She's definitely one of those champs where you can't be rewarded unless you start one-tricking her. And you learn everything there is to know about Riven. Okay? So I would say we lock down these four champs. Boom. Why? Because we could play them pretty much everywhere we need to go. If we want to learn mid and top, boom. Four champs, mid and top can be flexed. Uh, if you want to go mid and jungle, boom, you know, you got four champs for mid and jungle. If you want to go, you know, top jungle, boom, you got three champs that can do it. 
uh, Jax is trying to American go jungle. Kennen obviously can't, but they can go. They all three can go top, right? So lock down two rolls, or maybe just one roll. You usually don't get auto filled too much, but if you do, you got to back up. I would definitely just say mid and top because you play a lot of laners anyway. You don't really have a lot of jungle experience, and I'm going to assume jungle is not how you got to gold. Um, you might be like, oh, I can play jungle. I get that. I get that. But that is not your best role considering we don't play it all the time. You know what I mean? You don't have the intricacies of jungle because we just don't play it a lot. So I definitely think you should stick to a couple of champions and a couple of uh, roles, and you'll be on your way. All those losers and all those 50% win rate champions are why we are not climbing as fast as you would like to climb. And that's also why you can't find yourself carrying when you do well with those off champions because you don't play those champions. So you're not going to know how to carry with those champions. Every champion plays differently, um, more or less. And every champion has their own strengths and weaknesses. And you playing to so many like that, you'll kind of lose out on it. Okay. I said that was a pretty decent trade. Nothing really wrong with that. One thing you want to notice right now is that we are behind in minions. Basically, if he walks up and just hits these minions, he'll hit level 2 first, go all in on you, and he's not going to kill you, but it's going to be a really, really heavy trade on your part. I don't really know why he's taking Aftershock. That's definitely awkward, but whatever. Whatever he wants to do with his life. So pay attention to the minions. Obviously, Malphite's not much of a level 2 threat, but whenever you're going against anybody that is a level 2 threat, top or bot, let's say Trindamir, uh, Riven, Aatrox... Uh, Yasuo, Zion, like there's a lot of level two threat champions, tanks or not. And you need to pay attention because this guy is already a higher level experience than you are. If he just walks up to a minion and he abuses the fact that he's going to be level two and you're going to be level one, you're going to take a massive hit. And you're going to lose your early game pretty hard doing that. So I'm going to say pay more attention to when your you and your laner are going to hit level two okay if you do that your trades will be a lot better vice versa if you know you're gonna hit level two first you could definitely pull it off and then go in at level two as well so right now we know we're behind we should be trying to get our best at level two which we're not and we don't so another thing we want to try to do is um, try to always get level two advantage first um this goes for all the champs you play. Honestly, I don't see any champs you play where they won't benefit off of level two. Most champs, if not almost all of them, can benefit off level two, so you wanna to try to get that first without actually shoving the wave super hard. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. I wanna say, watch your trades. You look to trade if you're not going to take a ton of money aggro. So, Ribbon's a little funky. Okay, I used to main the shit out some Ribbon a long time ago. I used to main, I think, every champion <laughs> except the new ones. Um, Yone, obviously, is not out. And then L Lilia, I, yeah, no, I haven't played her yet. But every other champ, I've definitely mained for a, a certain amount of time. Ribbon was one of those out of main, leave, main, leave, main, leave. She's a little crazy, but... The way that her trades work when it comes to minions is it really only aggros you if you auto. Now you might be thinking, well, autoing is pretty much how I get most of my damage because I have the enhanced auto attack. That is correct. But if you can constantly spam your Qs and not take any aggro at all, how healthy do you think you'd be right now? You don't need to put in those autos because even if it is 20 damage, you do way more than that, but it's 20 damage and you do that every like 10 seconds, bam, bam, eventually they're going to be at zero HP. Or super low and have to back. So when you are at, when you are like trying to auto him, that was really risky. When you are trying to auto him, going for your cues and whatnot, you want to make sure that you are in a better position to not take so much minion aggro. Otherwise, just go in, queue, do your business, um, and then get out. That way, you're not having any aggro. The only time you take minion aggro are when you're using targeted spells attack or spell attacks, and when you auto attack. So. To a lot more of your trades without autoing. It goes for Kinnon, goes for Cat, goes for uh, Trinomir. I mean, obviously, with Trinomir is a little different. <laughs> Jax, you can dodge the autos. Okay, so we're looking to TP back here. So I could tell you have really no rhyme or rhythm when it comes to controlling the weight. You're not really controlling the wave for a specific reason. 
they're kind of just doing the thing, right? If we want to control a wave for a specific reason, we got to learn the wave manage. Now, that's obviously pretty difficult to teach within a replay, but pretty much if we know that we want it all in this guy, the wave shouldn't be here. Holy crap, that was bad. The wave shouldn't be there. The wave should be up here, right? We should make it so that if we go on, we have to, you can get to chase them down all the way. This also makes it so that we can get, be safe from ganks, more or less. So every matchup is going to be different for where you want to keep the wave, but definitely have a reason, right? If you have a really big wave here, and you know it's going to start hard pushing, what you could do is just engage all in on them because you have the minion advantage. This goes for any any laner you're going against. We have so many more. I have more minions than you. I could fight you. I already know I have to reset the wave anyway. I don't have to freeze it. And you start trading. Way, way different. So let's see if we can pick out any of those type of things that you do when you go for them. Okay. So we want to freeze it here. And we didn't. Right? And why, why would we want to freeze there? Did Malphite TP, by the way? Where is he? Oh, he's right here. Okay, so why why would we want to why would we want to freeze there? Because we know that if Malphite does anything, we'll just walk up and kill him, more or less. I mean, you kind of made it hard on yourself because you're super behind now. But if Malphite walks up, he's gonna have to ult away from you if you were ahead of him a little bit. So we would keep the wave here. That way you wouldn't have to worry about trying to get him under the tower like you did before and you got ganked and you're forced to back. Also, you might be thinking, well, he left lane, so I thought I should shove it. Okay, I like that theory. But he's going to lose a lot more minions from these minions in this next wave coming to kill these minions than he will if you push the wave. So we have six minions here. Let's see how many he loses because you shoved it. He lost five. He was there for that sixth one. He didn't get it, but he was there for it. Whereas if you would have kept the wave here, he would have lost those six, the next six. And if you want to thin it out enough so that you can still stand behind the wave, he's forced to sit back here because you'll be six by the time he comes back and he'll miss more. All about that wave management. That's what top lane's about. Big brain plays in lane. Unlucky. If you're, if you're curious why I chose this game, I chose this game because I noticed you play a couple of uh, a couple of games of Riven, but I also noticed that this game was fairly long, and we had a, we had a quite amount of deaths, but it was a pretty long game that we ended up losing. So I want to see what particularly made us lose it. Okay, we we'll get the kill. I don't know if you necessarily had the flash on that. All right, we know she's here. Let her get the kill. It's fine. But because you got greedy, you died for it. Never do that. Uh, <laughs> I used to do that too. It's just not worth it. When you know you can give the kill to someone else, let them have it if you are close to death. Very, very important that we just give them those kills because at least you get the assist and then she can help you shove the lane. Obviously, Victor's here, so, you know, good luck with that. But at least we wouldn't be behind, wouldn't be forced TP. Definitely shouldn't be TP to lane like that. Not because that was just a particular bad play, but in other scenarios, usually if a laner TPs to a minion, the top laner will be there and then the jungler could be somewhere around and he'll just ping the person and the jungler will come get you. So you never really want to TP to lane no matter what game you're in, how to TP, just TP to the tower and then just walk. If you want to be hiding, walk right there or whatever. But more or less, you never really want to TP to the wave unless the wave is just damn near in front of your tower. Or you know the jungler's bot side or something like that and you could just TP for free. Okay. Nice. Let me just kind of see how all that worked out. That looked like it took a little bit longer than it had to. And I'm just not sure what happened. So let me just kind of watch it slow. Oh, he missed. I was like, what happened? OK. 
Okay. Pretty much just, just the same thing. This has just been a really long landing phase. But because we didn't get that advantage from being able to freeze the wave here, like at like three minutes, or even earlier, honestly, if you, when he starts shoving towards you and you would manage to freeze the wave here, he'd be weaker than you. He doesn't want to step up, which you can then zone him off the wave and just have levels on him. But because we don't have that early game lead with Riven, we don't really get to do anything. We're easily able to be beaten by people, and that's not what you want. This guy is inting to you, so you're getting kills. This would not happen in high elo. So you have to be really, really careful when you're going for kills like this, don't let that be cemented into your mind that I can definitely play Riven. I can definitely kill everybody. I'm not saying you're thinking that. I'm just saying be careful with that because you don't want to do that same play or a lot of the same plays in higher elo and then wonder why they're not working. Or in other games. Sometimes it's just other games. It doesn't even have to be a higher elo. Sometimes you'll do one thing in one game, try that again in the next game, it doesn't work. And you're like, why is it not working? Because that guy is really good. So you're able to get your... You were able to get your uh, your lead back. This is good. So we got a lead now. All right. Above, above him in CS, we got our lead. Cool. Right here, we know Dragon's up. There's no reason for us to be down here. Or not up down here. Up here. Right? So it's a top laner. As a top laner slash mid laner. You always want to be there for objectives. No matter what objective it is, just be there. Very, very important. Every single objective you should be there for unless you know for 100% fact your team doesn't need you or you have teleport. You don't have teleport, so we're going top and we're trying to split push. There's two reasons for us to split push, okay? When you split push, you only split push because you want to pressure or because you want to stall the game. Pressuring, you're putting pressure, but doesn't matter because, you know, Malphite was over there. So what are you pressuring? Now, at this point, you're forced to keep pushing, which you're not really needing to stall the game because your team's ahead. So there's really no reason for us to be up here right now. Gotta definitely work on uh, trying to kill people. Any little exercise you need to do for, oops, for every play you do, have a specific goal in mind. Other than kills. Raw. Okay. Other than kills. So I want you to go to like your recent games or whatever and just go to some places where you made a play if you remember. If you don't remember, just go to some deaths. See why you died. See what the play was and ask yourself, what was I really going to get out that play if I got away with what I was trying to do? Let's go back to this here. Right? You're like, well, Let's fucking go eight. You did that. Even if you kill that guy and you went into tower, you would have died to him or her. If this guy was better, you wouldn't have killed him anyway. But let's say you managed to kill two of them. What do you accomplish? Well, I can get tower. Well, they're probably sending someone else to come get you too. Right? So you wouldn't accomplish really anything. You could say, well, my team was able to get mid. Well, they could have got mid if you just backed up anyway and just sat and been safe while these two were clearing out waves. Right? And then you would come back, pressure again, and if your team continues to push, you keep pushing too, and then rinse and repeat the same strat, and that way nobody dies and everybody's safe. You do not need to cause a commotion to have your team get stuff. And I, like I said, I think you just do it in other games, and it might be working, so you're like, well, let's, let me keep doing it. And that's not typically how you want to play. Remember, you only split push to stall the game or to cause pressure. Right now we're split pushing. There's really no reason to stall the game. Nobody is ready for anything. I mean, not stall, pressure. There's nobody, there's nobody's ready for anything. We managed to get away with the kill and we managed to actually live. But if we look at that again, do we think that we got that kill because we are just legendary or we just got super lucky that they played it like crap? Let's see. Let's see. You're doing your thing, doing your thing. Ninu comes in by himself, knocks you up, runs away, gets the red smite on. Okay, you chase him. Then Malphite comes in. Okay. Ninu then gets closer to try to do what exactly when he didn't have to get close because he could have just recalled and let Malphite handle it. 
He dies instantly. You get HP back because of that. Malphite didn't build Bramble's Vest at all. Neither did Nunu. So you're just getting free life still, three free heals. And he decides to roll up. Luckily, you know, Thresh was there as well. Jin decides the ult, and then it goes like that. As far as I'm concerned, that looked like a whole fiesta of things happening, okay? And that's the only reason why I point this out is because almost all players, I would hope you included, do not want to climb because these players suck, right? You want to climb because you are better than all nine of these players. I don't know how to draw nine. Let's just do that. All nine of these players, right? That's why you would want to climb. You would not want to climb because they suck. Because you're going to develop bad habits. You're going to be able to say, oh, well, I can easily, you know, crap on these guys free. And then what do you do? Get to a high elo where that doesn't work and you start demoting and you feel bad. And yeah, that's the same thing that happens when people smurf, right? They smurf too much and eventually go back to their main account and they'll get dumpstered because they develop bad habits from being able to play in lower elo. It's just what happens. Okay. Yep, yeah, you should be there. Should have gone there a little quicker, but you have the right idea this time. Good job. Okay. It looks like it's just the same stuff over and over. At least this particular game. It's one of the two things. You want to try to be the hero and like pull off something cool, even though nobody's really looking at your play, right? And that might sound mean, but you got to be realistic. Nobody's really watching you under a microscope. Nobody cares whatever you play you pull off. You're not going to be on an epic, you know, video or anything like that, right? We're here to climb. That's all we're here for. You're going to be epic once you get a high rank, right? That's that's where it matters. You're going to start having videos made after you when you get a high rank, right? But right now, nobody cares. So why are we trying to be flashy? I'd nine times out of ten just rather get my LP than look cool. Unless I'm streaming. If I'm streaming, that's a different fucking story. I'm gonna try to look cool and fucking int while I do it, because I'm a beast. But aside from that, if I'm playing solo with no with with no stream, I'm gonna, you know, just go for the LP. That's it. Definitely terrible time to back, back a little bit earlier, so you are on that dragon on time. Once again, though, you have the right idea of uh, being at the dragon. It's just it's always like so you do something to be there late or you just completely neglect it sometimes. So if you fix that, I think you'll be all right. A lot of these fights will uh, go more in your favor. All right. Coming back, going for that play. That wasn't really going to lead to anything. It, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. You, 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 you're really focused on your own play. I could definitely tell. Like you really don't care who else is in the game with you. It's all about you. <laughs> and I used to be like that, so I can't even... <laughs> I can't even harp on you about it, because I used to be like that too. This is why I play all these roles and have all these accounts, and this is why I help, you know, like I wanna do all that. Cause I used to be just like all you guys, man. And it's just funny, cause I see myself where you guys are. So I just always crack up when it's like, ah, oh, I used to do the same exact thing that y'all did. Um, okay, so I definitely think, like I said, it's just a repeat what happened in this game. Um, the homework, I usually give homework, is pretty much just means the stuff I think you should focus on first. Um, I think you need to pay more attention when you're hitting level two and look for that window to trade. You have to hit it first. If you can hit, hit it first, because like I said, you play a lot of champs that like to do this. Hit level two first. Really, really pay attention to it. Um, and if you know that your laner is going to be ahead of you, you need to back off so they can't level two cheese you. Okay? So that's one and two there for you. Next one I think we need to work on here is um, number five. And number six. You're not really there for these objectives. You should be there and you should be pinging it about a minute ahead. I even like 
ping it like every 30 seconds or every 20 seconds to let people know like, hey, the fucking dragon's coming up. The, the Rift's Herald, hey, yep, yep, get this shit. Um, but for the most part, you just have to be there at this point because um, your teammates were already there in this specific game. And then the last thing here is for every play you do, have a specific goal. As I said before, a lot of the plays you do just don't make sense. And you're just doing them to be a hero. You're just doing them to look cool. Whether you think so consciously or not, it's so it shows in your gameplay. There's really no reason for you to go for a lot of these plays, but you're like, ah, let's do it. And you just die for it. And that could be said for I'm pretty sure almost all your games. You make you just do stuff with no really thought behind why you're doing it. But if you could start really understanding, like, I'm gonna go for this play because if I kill her, this next fight we have in the team fights will win for this objective right now. Or I'm a split push here because I know that my teammates getting ready to do this. And that means that if I just hold them here, we'll be able to get this for free. Or I'm a teleport in because I know that I have enough time to, be, to make a play happen. Or, you know, I'm a teleport top because I know that that fight is doomed bot side. But at least I could push some waves to get to. You see what I mean? Like, these are just examples. But you need to be able to understand why you're doing something. You should never just do things randomly. Um, this even goes for trading in lane. Same thing. You know, you're not really having good wave management because you don't really know why you're doing something if you want to kill try to kill somebody and you know you're stronger and you, you don't want them to be under the tower then you keep the wave here right if you want to keep somebody from roaming or you want to look to die for proxy you would push the wave here right so you're gonna have to really start thinking about what you're what you're doing and why you're doing it and i think once you get that down pat and you play the same champions and play the same roles i guarantee you will be climbing like in no fucking time but those are the main things. Play your same champs. I'm actually write that down just to kind of put that in your head uh, and make sure that you you stick to it. Um, play a couple of champs and only two rolls. Okay. So if this helped you out, if you got any questions, let me know. But I hope you know you got you got some shit out of this. Um, and yeah, that was a terrible outro, wasn't it? Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. If you guys got any question, other than, uh, even if you're not, of course, person I'm bothering reviewing, if you guys have any questions about any concepts that I said about it, let me know and we can talk about it together. Um, but other than that, thank you guys for approaching this like a coach.